and those students who have not yet entered your roll numbers uh please do enter your roll numbers so as to consolidate your numbers and uh, confirm that as the attendance of today's class yeah so we came to the third week i think this is the 14th class and we have almost came to the end of the syllabus but however we have uh, enough uh, time in terms of both because of lockdown and because of the uh, academic regulatory authority deadlines because they have extended the curriculum to i mean they have extended the alumna cup to 23rd of may am i audible is my audio clarity is good maybe yes, yes sir no somebody is saying no yes sir yes okay let me specifically ask some students who are using cell phones uh abhignya 121 can you able to hear my voice One twenty one. One twenty one. Start recording. I think I started the recording. Yes. One twenty one. Are you present? One twenty one. Okay. let me go down one 26 i think uh, priya right 126 if i am correct sir hey is my voice is clear yes sir it's audible okay good 170 170 so you can probably you know you can keep yeah 170 is it am i is my voice is clear yes sir okay fine good 173 headset headset you are using okay 173 am i audible sir okay fine yeah so before i take up now there are 55 students drop your number that is one and uh, second is let me open the chat second is uh, please uh, make ensure that after this post class after the completion of today's classes that is probably in the afternoon you download uh, microsoft microsoft teams app just kept it in uh, the chat box so if you are using it uh, if you are using uh, a mobile phone which is powered by either android or uh, macintosh or uh, ios or okay so you download this microsoft teams because uh, we have already started this official teams with ec section a so sooner you will also be asked to migrate so the passwords are also generated for your batch only thing is it needs to be channelized and uh, it has a good features and more most importantly it has a control on uh, the content which is disseminating on these platforms which is uh, on online uh, medium and you can't uh, uh, upload or uh, um, route that data through public channels like uh, gmail or uh, youtube okay so only office 365 users alone can able to uh can able to log in and participate in the online classes so that will be a much more structured approach of handling the regular uh, academics okay so that app this app is available both in uh, desktop versions meaning it is available for a desktop app as a desktop app with uh, specific operating system what you are using and also this is available for your uh, mobile phones it is a extreme lightweight application which uh, takes very limited uh, memory okay so <clears throat> install it uh, probably in uh, a week or so you will also 
be asked to use or switch to this uh, platform okay already ec section a students are uh, i mean we, we have we have started this because because uh, because of the incidents which took place like the students are playing hide and seek games okay so am i audible yes sir human reactions is virtually make yourself be comfortable and uh, assume that you are sitting in the class though i understand it is saturday <laughs> okay yes sir no shall i shall i proceed yes sir okay so, yes sir yeah in today's class what we will deal is we will look into the implementation aspects i think in the last class we discussed about the importance of uh, queue data structure so let let us redefine what is the definition of queue queue is a data structure which is specifically implemented in a pre pre designated memory of ram that is in the data memory that defines a policy based operations which performs first in first out operations or last in last out operations okay so one of the main reason or advantage or technical uh, importance of queue is in order to make the processor itself available to schedule multiple tasks in multitasking the multiple processes that were initiated by the user which are nothing but pointer to the functions will be kept into a something called as a instruction queue so in that instruction queue it is also possible to it is also possible to uh, to look on the existing processes which are there in the queue and then it is also possible to prioritize those pointers to the uh, services in order to make ensure that the latency issues of different applications are addressed per processor based designs okay so i think in the last class we took some three applications like facebook gmail and uh, some other uh, app so i uh, have in a in a vague sense i have uh, discussed about the importance of implementation of queue from the operating system point of view so this is the technical importance of queue okay clear are you listening are you following yes sir okay so in today's class let us start the implementation of queue add class with both the static arrays as well as the dynamic arrays and of course we will be in a position to do the implementation of queue class with the linked list okay so let us start with the static array implementation with a sort of analysis what needs to be done okay so let me swing let me switch to switch to the chrome and maybe i'll open a whiteboard so assume that you are asked to implement a queue so assume this is your queue and for uh, sake of easiness i am taking a queue of five entries means this is queue of 0 this is queue of 1 Q of two. This is Q of three. One, three, four, five. Four and five. Okay. So first of all, what is the difference? What is the difference between Q and stack? What is the difference between a Q and stack? Our stack versus queue, and summarize the important technical aspects of these two data structures from the context of any computing hardware or any computing architecture. Let me repeat the question: What are the differences between stack and queue, and what are the similarities of stack and queues? Summarize what are its important. Uh, uh, what what is what, what are their important what are their uh, important characteristics or their features 
in the context of any computing system. Okay, so this is many times asked two mass question. So the first point is coming to stack, it is first in, last out, whereas Q it is first in, first out. Similarly, coming to stack, in, last out, in stack, as in Q it is first in, first out. Next, this is last in, last out, in stack, whereas this is last in, last out, which is the technical definition of stacks and queues. Now, next difference is in stack, you have only one way. In stack, you have only one way, isn't it? Or no? You have only one way handling the handling the data. Whereas in queue, you have two ways. Okay. So you require only one offset. You require only one offset in order to deal with stack related operations. Whereas here you require two offsets because there are two ways, right? And stack, okay, so the operations which are, which is used in order to insert, whenever you insert an element in the stack, okay, so that operation is called as push, whereas here that is called as NQ. Similarly, when you are deleting a data element that is called as pop, and here the deleting is called as DQ. Okay. Next, stack is used mainly in order to handle APIs, which are nothing but functions, which are nothing but functions, are, are larger expressions, larger expressions, as well as in order to handle interrupt vector table, IBT, vector table, or interrupt vectors, which are prone to the processor. Whereas queues are used in order to handle in order to handle multitasking. Multitasking of, of multiple processes of multiple processes. Okay, so queues are used in order to handle multitasking of multiple processes by whom? by importantly by the operating system importantly by the operating system of the underlying hardware operating system which is ported on the underlying hardware it could be a desktop application like where you are using a generic operating system such as windows or it could be an embedded operating system which is something like android or uh, symbian or palm os which are specifically designed for embedded handheld devices Okay, so these are the important uh, differences between stacks and queues. Here, any other differences we are missing out? Any other differences we are missing out? Maybe you can also write uh, queue scaling. Sorry, stack is scaled only from bottom to up. Therefore, it is a vertical uh, strategic memory mapping from the programmer's point of view, whereas in Q, it is from left to right. Okay. So we use the uh, horizontal notion of memory mapping when we deal with the Q. So we deal with vertical memory mapping for stack with, uh, with the down entry as sealed, whereas in Q, we use left to right. Okay. Sir, right to left. Uh, left to right, I'm I'm considering this as NQ. So what I'm doing is this part is NQ, and that, that, that means this part is DQ. So Q is operating from uh, left to right. The point is it is horizontal, whereas stack visualization is vertical. Notice that these are very important differences that you need to write specifically when it is asked and when you are this, uh, when you are asked to explain about uh, in the context of uh, uh, operations, 
Then stacks, you have to write in terms of functions, expressions, IVT, and queues, you have to write that in order to deal multiple processes by the operating system. How it is being dealt is a separate course that you will be studying. Okay, when you when you are familiar with the processors architectures. Now, next is let us now discuss about the process of engaging this, engaging or handling the queues. Okay. So, yeah, another uh, important uh, difference I forgot to mention is you require only one offsets. Here you require two offsets. Yeah, we have written that. I have to write those names also. It is friend and it is pair. Whereas here we use uh, only top in stack. Okay, so therefore it is evident that now therefore it is evident that I have to use two offsets. Now I'm discussing about the programming aspects. So initially both the offsets and the rare. Both the offsets. Take, now here there is another uh, the uh, discussion which you need to understand whether you can consider the entry process where you are entering as friend or you can consider the deletion of element where you are servicing the element by dequeuing as friend. So among these two, let me again repeat, you can consider this part as friend, friend where you are inserting, that is this way or where you are servicing, that is this part as friend. Out of these two, am I clear? Out of these two, I am considering the place where you are servicing as friend. I am considering the element where you are inserting as rare. Okay. So therefore, initially, are you following? Are you following? Yes, sir. So therefore, initially, there will be two offsets which are friend and rare. Okay, so we will keep these two offsets, friend is equal to zero, also rare is equal to zero. Rare also equal to zero. So both are pointing to the Q of zero, which is as shown in this uh, figure. Okay, so this is Q of zero. And this fellow is Q of four. This is Q of 4. Okay. Clear? Clear. Now let us deal about the operations. What are the operations? First is as a part of constructor or the initialization code. So, as a part of initialization code, what has to be done? Now I am discussing about the static array. What is the element size? What is the size of the Q? It is 5. Here we have a size of five elements. Okay. So initially friend and the rare both are pointing to zero. Right. So what we will do is initially we will say that friend is zero and we will say that rare is zero. We will also say that starting from i is equal to zero to five you keep all q of i as zero. This is the sort of constructor code that you have to write. This is the constructor code that you have to write. This has to, this code has to sit in the constructor. Sir, no. Clear. Static array. Yes, sir. Five is nothing but hash defined max. Okay. Now next, what are the operations? The operations that I have to consider are NQ. So first let us discuss about NQ. So assume that you, you want to NQ a data element uh, whose value is uh, 4. Okay. So whenever any NQing process is done, for example, first is 4, next is 3, next you want to NQ, let us say 7. So this is your uh, NQing requirement. First is 4 needs to be NQed. When you are NQing 4, when you are NQing 4, then only the rare pointer, only this rare pointer has to shift to the next so that it will be in a position to accept the next element. And always, always friend offset, 
always front offset has to point to zero only because this is the place where you are dereferencing the element. Okay. So when rare is zero, you are inserting the element and then rare becomes one. When rare is uh, one, you are inserting the next element, which is I think considered as seven. Okay. So when rare is uh, two, so next rare is pointing to here. Okay. So that means rare is rare has become rare plus plus. So then when uh, you are inserting here, you need to check, make ensure that Q is not full. Okay. So let us now start understanding the algorithm, the algorithm for enqueuing process. So you need to return int, you have to enqueue it, you have to enqueue the data, which is let us say K. Okay, so this is the process which needs to be done. So first is, you have to check whether the queue is full. So what is the condition? You have to take a control on rare. You have to take a control on rare. If rare is equal to your max, or to be at the safe side, if rare is greater than or equal to max, okay, so let us uh, check if max is uh, five, Rare is 5, rare is 0, 4, rare is 1, you can keep, rare is 2, you can keep, rare is 3, you can keep, rare is 4, you can keep, and rare is 5, you cannot keep. This is okay. So this means if rare is greater than or equal to max, this means Q is, Q is full. Don't use overflow. Uh, are you, can you, can you come in? You following yes sir yes sir so tell that queue is full tell that you cannot uh, enqueue and then you return the error code which we are considering it as minus one otherwise what has to be done otherwise in queue of rare directly you keep k okay and then you do rare plus plus and then tell that enqueuing process is done Okay, so what is this? This is the process of enqueuing algorithm. Notice that only this part can be asked as an algorithm or as a flowchart. Okay. Suppose if you are asked to draw the flowchart of enqueuing process in order to handle the queue operations of a fixed size elements or a uh, of an array, then you have to start with you have to start with a diamond shape, okay, and then you have to check this condition. That is, if rare is greater than or equal to max, if it is true, okay. So if it is true, if it is true, then you have to say that Q is full. You have to say that Q is full, and then, and then you need to end. Okay, so and then you need to end. On the other hand, if it is false, if this is false, then you have to you have to make this Q of rare is equal to K. Okay, then again next, next you have to make rare plus plus, and then you have to again go to end of the process. You have to tell that the enqueuing is done. Am I clear? Am I clear? Are you following? Yes, sir. Okay. So this is about enqueuing process. This is about enqueuing process. Now let us discuss about the dequeuing process. Yes, dequeuing process. You need to check whether Q is empty. Okay. So dequeuing again int. DQ of void. Okay. So in this. When will be the Q, when will be the Q is empty if rare is equal to zero or to be safer side, if rare is less than or equal to zero, then you can say that Q is, Q is empty. Don't use the word underflow. Don't use the word underflow. Okay, and then you return saying that it is error code. On the other hand, 
on the other hand take the answer which is been pointed by q of friend okay and then and then what you have something some extra job to be done for example if you are dequeuing let us say 4 you are dequeuing this 4 then okay so then assume that you already have uh, kept some more elements so you have 4 you have you have 7 you have 3 you have 1 let us assume this is the sort of queue you have so once you are dequeuing 4 so 4 will be deleted that means 7 7 has to sit in q of 0 place 3 has to come in q of 1 place and 1 has to come in q of 2 place yes or no so you need to shift the q towards towards right side okay so you need to do the block copy by with an offset of uh, one. Okay, so what has to be done is while dequeuing, after uh, taking the answer which you are supposed to return, you need to mandatorily make ensure that you are running a for loop where you are starting from you are starting from i is equal to one, i is equal to one to one to rare i is equal to one to rare. What are you doing? You are changing q of Q of i minus 1 with Q of i. That Q of 1, first element is kept in 0th element, second element is kept in uh, first element and so on up to rare minus 1 elements. And this is a very important uh, point that needs to be done. This is a very important point. So after this, after this, you need to, you need to return the answer. This is the logic that needs to be written for DQ. Am I clear? Are you following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Similarly, uh, display is simple. While you are displaying, you have to display from uh, i is equal to 0 to rare. is less than rare. That means 0 to rare minus 1. You have to display Q of i with a tab space. Okay, so let us start coding now. Shall I proceed? Whatever I have discussed, I have to put it in C++ class code. Yes, shall I proceed? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Take C++. Let's include IO stream. Okay, so next is using namespace std. Now what are we discussing? This is implementation of Q class. Assume that implement a C C class is the question which has been asked. There is uh, no other information which is given to you. Okay, so you can directly take the implementation of Q class with the static array. Okay, unless otherwise in the question explicitly stated. Are you following? Next, let us also assume that you are asked to ask to implement with its member functions. Okay. Our implementation of Q with a fixed size array, implementation of Q class with a fixed size array, our implementation of Q ADT, Q ADT with its appropriate member functions. So anywhere if you are finding a question which is incomplete, by default you are welcome to take the implementation of Q with a fixed number of static arrays. Also note that if you are getting a question, for example, implement Q in C++, that's it. Implement Q in C++. Now there is no need of even taking a class. However, I recommend you to take or consider the class 
because the entire semester we are talking about C++. Okay. So when you are asked to implement Q in C++, though it is not uh, being specified in the question that you have to consider a class, but classes are the important powerful features of C++ and since in the question it's been asked to use C++, you are advised to take a class. You following? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So you take a Q, class Q, then private, then public, the private, the private what? Int Q of max, as hash defined max. Is hash defined max as 5. Let us also hash define the error code as minus 1. Okay. Now you need to take two offsets. One is print offset and second is rare offset. What are the member functions? Vector. Then what? Int NQ, NQ a data element, then DQ, DQ with void, you will return the data element, then display the queue, what, what are the contents which are there in queue, and finally destructors. Okay. Here. Now let us start writing main. Am I clear? Yes, 71. Are you there? Sir, so, it's clear, sir. So let us start writing main. This fellow need uh, me to change my mind to end. Okay. So let us create a Q object, Q, Q1. Okay. So carefully use the variables. Don't again take uh, capital Q. You can take, but okay, small Q1. So what is this? This is a, this is the object of Q class, which is a direct object. Now what? I need a choice. I will ask some element X and then I'll, I'll be fetching that X and then I'll be getting the return value, which is M. Now, as usual, you will have to write a, a endless loop, throwing the options to the user, C out. Okay, so backslash n1 nq, we want to nq, then backslash t2 dq, then backslash t3, you need to display, then 4, backslash t4, you need to exit. Okay, so Again, backslash in, choose, choose what you want. Okay. So as the user to accept the choice, which is choice, then what? Then switch off choice. Switch off choice. Now you will get uh, 4 plus 1 default 5 cases. So case 1, case 2, case 3, case 4. Uh, then default default is uh, invalid choice okay and then break now let us keep break breaks to all other uh, rest of the choices now the uh, mistakes that i have found in students in uh, using the switch case is writing a brace here don't do that. You you are again redefining the scope. Okay. So as long as you are dealing with switch case, under the cases, even though under the cases you have multiple statements, writing break is not necessary. Okay. Writing uh, opening brace and closing brace is not necessary. So this completes the skeleton of uh, switch case. Now let us uh, start writing the member functions one by one. Let us start with the constructor. 
so it is q we are talking about q constructor so in this c out you are in default constructor then say that front is equal to 0 what we have discussed and rear is also equal to 0 and starting from for i is equal to 0 to i is less than max i plus plus you flush the queue with you flush the junk values which are there in queue with the zeros okay now let us take case one case one user wants to enqueue it are you following now see out enter enter your element enter your element to n n q or keep or insert so let us take that into x so let us use m as a return value let us take q1 which is the object now n q is the member function you have to pass x okay now based on the return value if m is uh, equal to equal to 1 then i'll say that c out include is enqueued okay and and l else queuing is failed means queue is full queuing is failed yes, following please come in are you following yes sir Okay, good. Let us start enqueuing now. Int Q Q. Okay, so NQ int, let us say K. We are passing X there, which is K here. Now, if see the condition, what is uh, NQ if rare is greater than or equal to max? If rare is greater than or equal to max. Then you say that Q is full. Okay, and then return, return error code, which is minus one. Otherwise, otherwise what has to be done? Otherwise what has to be done is you have to keep insert, insert at rare, insert at rare with a value K and you increment rare plus plus. Then you return one. So enqueuing is done. Okay. Correct. Next, let us start dequeuing. Let us start dequeuing. So what we will do is we will use X in order to dequeue the data element Q1, and we will use dequeuing. We'll use dequeue. Okay, so if x is equal to equal to error code, then there is a DQ error. Okay, else we will be getting a DQ'd item. Equated item is x. Right. Let us start writing the dequeuing process. So, in the dequeuing process, what has to be done? You need to return end. You are talking about inside the queue. You are talking about dequeue of void. So, in this, are you talking about is uh, whether queue is empty if rare is less than or equal to zero that means q is empty so tell that tell that q is empty and then you return you return error code otherwise 
get the answer that is int are you following int answer is equal to q of friend are you following yes sir so starting from i is equal to 1 till i is less than rare i plus plus you need to shift the q such that in q of i minus 1 you are keeping with q of i okay then you have to return the answer sir less than or equal to rare uh, i is less than less than only Rare is zero. You have uh, no. You don't have an item. Rare is zero. You don't have an item. Rare is one. You have an item. Rare is one. You have an item. Okay. So when rare is two, you have two items. When rare is three, you have three items. When rare is four, you have four items. When rare is five, you have five items. So if you are removing one fellow, you have to start from one to four only. No, no, 1 to 5, 1 to 5, that is correct, 1 to 5 only, okay? So, they answered, yes sir, no? Sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so case 3, let us display, see out, two contents are, two contents are, and let us directly use display function in order to display the queue okay so displaying is a simple task so what has to be done you have to write void and then you write queue you write display of void okay so let us uh, start the first exception which is if rare is rare is equal to 0, rare is equal to 0 or to be at the safer side if rare is less than or equal to 0 then q is empty. Let's see out, say that q is empty. q is empty and then simply return because it is void. You, you don't have, you don't need to display. On the other hand, probably you can use else if. On the other hand, if uh, else if where is is uh, greater than or equal to max q is full okay so then q is full so i don't need to return i'll just write a statement because if q is full then you have to display so q is full in the next line uh, okay i don't need else if ladder i'll write simple if Now I'll run a for loop with i is equal to 0, i is less than rare, i plus plus, and then I'll throw the value of q of i, I'll throw the value of q of i with probably a q, but here there is a problem. The problem is if I write i is equal to 0, then uh, what I'll be displaying is, I'll be displaying, you know, uh, 4 first. Then 7 next, then 3 next. Isn't it? So let us just flip it so that we will get a visualization of Q. That means I need to display 3 first. So that means I have to start from uh, rare. Are you following? So I am starting i is equal to uh, rare minus 1 because rare is already 3. i is greater than or equal to 0, including 0. Because at 0 also I have an element and then i minus minus. Oh, sorry, where am I changing? In somewhere else. Are you following? I have to do this in uh, display here. So, yes, sir. Yes, sir. from i is equal to rare minus 1, uh, i is greater than or equal to 0, then i minus minus. Then I'll be displaying Q of I. 
So display is completed and then let us check case 4 he wants to go home so let us uh, write c out okay and then uh, return the true process and outside of while one you return zero which is a false process never come here because it is while one and anything else uh, anything else ask if find max ask if find max we have done it okay if find max is five destructor is five let us write a simple line of a destructor okay, so that is uh, q q of q void since it is static you don't have to do anything so just say that you are in default district okay. Done. let us start compiling this shall i start compiling this Anybody has questions? Uh, am I audible? Anybody has any doubts? Please come in. Anybody has any doubts? No, sir. Okay, so shall I start compiling? Yes, yes sir. Yes, sir. There are some errors. I think I is not defined here. Let us define this fellow int. And then there is another error. Okay, this is a double quote. This has to be kept as a string, and then I have to keep, and then I have to keep uh, semicolon. Let's compile this. Okay, so default constructor is called. Choose. This is a spelling mistake of NQ. So let let me start NQing. Uh, there are a total of five elements. So I'll start. Uh, let let us keep uh, seven. Let me display seven and again let me NQ, let me NQ 14 and let me display seven and then 14. So seven is at the front. For seven, there is nothing. Okay. And again, let me NQ, let me NQ and then let me enter 21. I'm keeping seven table. Again, let me display. And again, let us take NQ and then 28. Again, display. Let us keep uh, 35. In uh, display. Okay. Where did it went? Why? I. I have chosen okay let me again in q 1 5 and then let me display 3 okay so it is in q let me also do in q another uh, next multiple of 7 which is again 1 Uh, okay, element Q is full. Okay, so Q is full. Then try to display. You have the display now. Let us start dequeuing. Dequeue item is seven because seven is first. Let us display three. Yeah, contents are full. Okay, now let us uh, dequeue two. Now you will get fourteen. Let us display. There is Q is full every time it is coming. Greater than or equal to. Where is greater than or equal to max? Something bad has happened. I have entered 35 three times. Let me exit. Let us see what is the problem. Okay. 
should the element uh, somebody is responding in chat should the element uh, sir should the enqueued element definitely display on left side not necessary not necessary do because i just want to display i mean one of the student has asked uh, should the enqueued element enqueued element definitely display on the left side not necessary okay you can keep that in the right side also so at, at that time front will be on your left left hand side and rear will be on your right hand side so it's all uh, based on your convenience okay so let us uh, understand doing any mistake here uh, display is done okay uh, no enqueuing process let us enqueue one by one there are five elements we start enqueuing sir in dq sir in dq start enqueuing. minus minus okay let me start enqueuing three let me start enqueuing four let me start enqueuing five display got one two three four five okay let me again start in queuing one and then if i put six then queue is uh, full yeah this is okay then uh, let me display six should not be there five okay. is full now let us start dequeuing i have to get one okay. you are displaying fine then choose again display Is where uh, double five is coming. When you are shifting in DQ, there is a bug. When you are shifting in DQ, there is a bug. DQ. Just check it out. I is equal to zero. I is less than where minus one, right? Sir, yeah. sir, in DQ, rare minus minus is not there. Rare. Rare. Minus minus. Means after uh, removing one element, yeah, we, yeah, should, yeah, yeah, we should yeah, we should yeah, get minus yeah. minus. Where minus minus is is not there. That is correct. Yes, that is correct. Yeah. So now I think this is okay. <laughs> okay. So let us uh, NQ one. One, two, one, three, one, four, one, five. Then let me display. Now let me try to enqueue again six. You will get enqueuing is failed. Now let us dequeue it one. And then when I display, I should not get. Now again when I dequeue and when, when I again display, other thing is cut. Next, dequeue. And again uh, display again display okay next again dq again uh, display again dq again display q is empty again dq then you will get q is empty and there is a dq error then again display q is empty then finally stop okay, so this completes the static array Anybody has any doubts? Clear? Sir, sir, what is need of front in this? Yeah, that is a good question. What is the need of front? There is no need of front. Actually, there is no need of front. Hello? Sneha, you have a class in the EC section C. You have a class in the EC section C. You have a class in the EC section C. Okay, half an hour there was call sent. You put a parallel. Attendance, you all could rally the aim in the app. Sir, sign up on the network. Password enter, sir. Teams, sir. Morning class, sir. Oh, no class, sir. Ah, what's that? Okay, okay. Okay, Nandi. Attendance, sir. You can say just a no. Uh, joined as attendant, you have joined as You have joined as an attendee, you uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Um, so, um, networking problem, I, I, I cannot help because 
సరే నేను నేను తర్వాత మాట్లాడతానండి క్లాస్ లో ఉన్నాను వీళ్ళకి ఇంకొక ఫైవ్ మినిట్స్ లో అయితే ప్రోగ్రామ్ వర్క్స్ ఫైన్ బికాస్ ఎవ్రీ టైమ్ ఫ్రెండ్ ఈస్ ఆల్వేస్ జీరో ఓకే ఫ్రెండ్ ఈస్ ఆల్వేస్ జీరో సో దెర్ ఈస్ నో నీడ్ ఆఫ్ ఫ్రెండ్ బట్ వెన్ యూ ఇంప్లిమెంట్ క్యూ which we will do after this implementation with a scalable array and after that in single linked list so when you take up the implementation aspect of single linked list okay so if you don't have friend then there is a problem okay It's because if you have friend and if you have rare you know where to cut you know where to add you have to cut at friend you have to add at rare simple so there is no loop at all okay so when you switch the implementation into the single linked list then you will appreciate the importance of a friend okay and also notice that the linked list has to be maintained again as the programmer's option you can either maintain a head at the friend friend or you can also maintain the head at the rare it is up to you so programmatically speaking if you take uh, head at the friend is is uh, better because to whichever node you are uh, attaching you don't need to carry forward the next uh, link which is already there so you tell that my i don't have next element next to me and then you attach as if it is a last bogey so whenever you are dequeuing you need to delete the data element in front side and you need to make the next node as the head node so the point is if the question is asked in order to implement c++ class q with rs if you say uh, i will not use friend that is not acceptable because technically q means you have to use friend and rare offsets that is one and second is you cannot generalize your own functions you have to use nq and dq functions only and third is you will understand the importance of uh, friend when you look into the implementation of uh, queue using data structure uh, which is which one the single linked list okay so are you clear yes sir okay maybe i think you have another class at 12 20 i'll take another 5 minutes and then i'll complete uh, in dynamic uh, scalable array okay so let me copy this i'm saving the code in uh, in notepad we take that as program 1 is ec because dynamic array is uh, straight forward it is simple and already code is uh, there in front of you so let me start dynamic array what am i talking about this is implementation of q class with with run time array or implementation of queue edit class with its member functions where you are implementing the uh, implement queue in c++ dynamically okay so you delete max then you have to take rq okay so then you take then you take uh, one extra element don't don't take pointer to front and rear take the element n here there are no changes in member functions are you following are you following yes sir okay now here there is a important point uh, see you can cut this n i think i have also discussed this aspect when we are implementing stacks if you eliminate n here and if you bring this n into main then your uh, member functions will carry overload it has to carry the overload because n is not known okay so you have to be careful which attributes specifically this number of elements so this 
is an extra attribute. This is an extra attribute that needs to be maintained when you are dealing a queue with a runtime uh, array. Okay. Now another point is where to construct memory for queue. Where to construct memory for queue. So some of you can claim that uh, I, I'll be in the default uh, constructor and then I'll say that here, uh, I'll say that uh, queue is pointing to null. Q is pointing to null. And then at the time of beginning of the first element insertion, there I will create a queue. That is okay. But again, check about the implementation aspects. Because if you do that, if you do that, then in the NQ process, you will get extra code. What will be the extra code? You need to, first of all, you have to pass an extra argument, which is N. Secondly, you need to check whether Q is null. If it is null, you have to allocate memory. If it is null, you have to allocate memory. Okay. So instead of all this, better design is, better design is, don't say Q is equal to null, because anyway, user is willing to use Q. So here you ask the user to enter the elements, which are nothing but n. Ask the user to enter n. Now accept that, that and then directly take n here, instead of as, asking n during the first element of enqueuing process, right at the constructor, ask the user to enter n. So once n is available, then once n is available, then what do you need to do? You need to allocate memory. So new, new, of n. Now here, if q is null, if you are not getting the adequate memory, probably you can say that I don't have enough RAM. There is no RAM. Okay, and then now this is a point that again you need to see that even though the constructor cannot return anything, we are returning nothing. This is nothing but returning a process, terminating the process. Sir, okay, in so constructor also, you should be null initial, you know, sir. In constructor? Q should be null initial, you know, sir. That's what I'm saying. If you write Q is equal to null, then you will get other problems. Problem is, anyway, you... Sir, in constructor itself, it's yeah. starting. Yeah. It means after... Oh, there, sir. Yeah, you can write. I mean, you, you, you can tell the line number. Line number after 26. Yeah, you can write. Here you can write. The point is you allocate memory inside the constructor only. Okay, sir. Allocate memory in constructor only. Okay. Because if you skip this, you need to tell at which place do I need to allocate the memory. So which place, enqueuing place. Again in enqueuing, and under what condition when Q is null and at that time again user has to supply N. So inside Q when you are taking N, then again that N has to be communicated back to main. That means you have to maintain N in, N in main. And then based on n, which is uh, thrown as an argument to nq function from main, you have to allocate memory. So this will be extra code. So instead of all this, you handle this simply in a constructor because in the meaning it is construction. And then you fill up the queue till uh, uh, n with uh, 0. With 0. Now what enqueuing, there is no change. Now, as a result, in both in enqueuing and dequeuing, there is no change. But here, if rare is greater than or equal to n here, instead of max, notice that n is accessible because it is an extra member. Are you following? Are you following? Yes, sir. Similarly, yes, sir. DQ. DQ, there is no change because you are controlling your loop by using rare. Similarly, display. Display up to, okay, Q will be full if it is greater than or equal to N. And again, you are displaying, right? So after display, then in the constructor, you need to simply delete. Delete home, delete Q. Okay. Let us test it. Okay. 
okay there is a return terminating the process and here okay so default constructor what is the value of n let me create a queue of 3 so in queue let us in queue 10 let us display 3 let us uh, again in queue 20 let us display 3 let us again in queue 30 let us display let us in queue again 40 now i have to get q is full and in queuing is failed so let me dq dq 10 3 display 10 is gone dq 20 then again 3 then uh, 20 is gone dq then you will get 30 then again 3 30 is gone then again try to dq you will get dq error q is empty okay again when you try to display q is empty so then 4 is exit clear clear these two are yes, asked external questions external examination questions both in the lab as well as in the theory Anybody has any doubts? Anybody has any doubts? Respond. Anybody has any doubts? Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yeah. Anybody has any doubts? No, sir. No. Okay, fine. And uh, what will happen? Now, what will happen? If I take a pointer to Q1 with a pointer inside, is it legal? Yes, sir. If yes, sir. if yes, how will but, uh, memory memory should be allocated to allocated, Q1 sir, in yeah, the so main. To again, be precise, again you have to scan. Yeah, so you have to to be precise. You tell that star Q1 is equal to null. But if you try to compile this, means Q1 has some address, but Q1 is pointing null. So this is a pointer. So let me it is a pointer to an object. So you have to use arrow operator, isn't it? You have to use arrow operator. I think before I make further changes, let me copy this code. Shall I take another three minutes? Take three minutes. Nobody is responding. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm just saving this as uh, P2. Where am I saving? I'm saving this in desktop. 43 has left the meeting. Okay. Now, now uh, what has to be done? Q1 arrow. Next. Q1 arrow. Next. Q1 display. Next. We try to run this. Uh, I think I didn't declare that pointer. I am correct. I didn't declare the pointer. Where is that? In main. Let me minimize this fellow. Let me go down. In main, I have to take a pointer. Let me compile. asking you nq dq display and exit but if i choose to nq an element let us say 12 you are getting q is full doing is failed because some junk address is being pointed and in that address already q is full the point here is did you call the constructor here did q1 has invoked any constructor no. 
sir no yes sir q1 has called any constructor here it, if it would have called a constructor then it should ask the value of n right it would have called a constructor then it is in line number 24 you should get a display saying that you are in default constructor Sir, for pointers, it will not call default constructor. Yeah, that is correct. So for pointers, it will not call the default constructor. And because you are explicitly saying that that pointer is pointing to a junk address, that junk address without allocating, uh, without calling its default constructor is invoking. Now, if you say that you point it to null, now if I execute, then also it will execute without any problem. But you get a problem here end of the element, for example, 23, it will get a segmentation fault because it is pointing to nobody. Okay, so to overcome this, what has to be done? Let me stop. Okay. Overcome this, what has to be done? You need to allocate memory to Q1 as new Q type. Sir, no. Then, Sir, we should also accept some n knows no this fellow will call the constructor as a part of the constructor you are accepting n there as a part of the constructor you are accepting n here Did? Did? have you understood what i am doing is i am creating some valid address saying that it is a Q, Q type. Now this fellow will call the default constructor. Now it is calling the default constructor, it is asking the value of n. Let me enter with the two elements. Call, again, uh, NQ, 23, display. What happened to two? Okay, like, let me again NQ, one more fellow. Uh, 12, let me display, yeah, 12 and then 23, now, now what, now let me try to again in Q with 34, I will get the Q is full, and if I start dequeuing, 23 again display, 12 again DQ, 12 uh, again display MD, and again, DQ error, DQ error. Clear? So what is this implementation? This implementation is implementation of Q class with a pointer to a Q having a scalable array. Okay, so I think Sir might be waiting. I'll stop here and I'll also stop the recording here. Are you, uh, have you followed? Following. Yes, sir. Uh, please uh, make ensure that you have uh, dropped your roll numbers for your attendance. Okay, so I'll stop here and then we'll meet in the next class for implementation of Q with uh, single linked list. Okay? Okay, then. Bye.